It's Kelly here again, talking to you about this guitar build. Unfortunately, in the early stages of building this guitar, I didn't really film a lot of it. I wasn't even expecting to get onto the uh, the great guitar build off with it. So I didn't really film much, but I did take a lot of photos. But when I decided I was going to enter the great guitar build off, that's when I started filming. So you will be seeing footage of me building this guitar, but as it's a little bit further along. Today it's all going to be about the neck. I think you're going to be pretty interested in this side marker jig that I came up with for putting side marking slots in the, uh, the edge of the fingerboard instead of dots. It's pretty cool, but I'll get to that later. But for now, uh, let's start where, where I left off in the first video, where I decided that I was going to go ahead and keep this build. I took the Telecaster neck off and ordered a Warmoth neck. And that neck had a paddle head, which meant that the, the head was not shaped. You could shape it any way you wanted. You could put your, your uh, tuners anywhere you wanted. Um, it was tilt back, so uh, that meant that I could build it the way I wanted to build it. I had a headstock design with a straight string pull. I made a template for it and proceeded to route the headstock. Then after I routed the headstock, I shaped the area where the neck blends into the headstock, which was a little bit of a problem when it came time for me to bind the headstock. Because that area, the wood on the side, was not at a right angle to the face, meant that the, uh, the router bit would have taken off too much wood as it, as it came around and, and, and the roller tried to follow the tapered area. That created a problem. How was, how was I going to do it? Uh, I'd already done that, and so there was no undoing it. I thought, well, I could, I could probably put some putty in there and form that right angle, and then the bearing would follow the putty. But then what if the putty cracked off in the middle of me doing that? And I started thinking about it. What if, what if I just stopped the route? It was a mistake, but uh, it actually turned out kind of nice. I liked the look of it. I, I just route around the headstock and uh, and stop the route before it gets to the nut, before it gets to that area that was tapered off. Here's the neck. This is the taper I'm talking about that would make it very dip difficult for the router to follow. So up to right about here and to right about here, uh, it's uh, it's at a right angle to the to the, to the face. But as you go further, the router would have taken off too big a too big a bite. So um, I ended up with this solution, which which was an accident. I didn't plan for it, but actually I like the way that looks. Uh, I had the same problem with the body. I had I had um, contoured on the the top side where the where the body meets the neck. I had I had contoured away in that area, uh, the same kind of problem. And I realized, well, if, if this works, I'll do it with the body as well. I had been thinking of trying the, the putty and, and to restore that right angle. Um, but uh, I did the same thing to the body as the headstock, and it, I like the way it looks. It's, maybe it will be my signature look. All my guitars may just end up having binding that stops near the neck. So now on to the really fun stuff. The side markers. The side marking jig. If you notice, this neck has these marks. Well, as I get older, I find that when I'm on a dark stage, it's hard to see the markers on the side of the guitar. And I don't like looking around at the front of the fingerboard to see where I'm at. My old Les Paul is not a, is not a problem because it's got a, it's got a white binding on the, on the side of the fingerboard with, with dark dots, so it's easy to see. But my Paul Reed Smith is the same problem. On a dark stage, it's hard to see the dots. For some reason, it just, they kind of blend in. So this has become a big deal for me, and I've been wanting to have a solution to... Uh, to the problem. I wanted to be able to do this. But how was I going to do it? Well, I 
did a lot of thinking about it and thought, well, I just need to be able to come up with a jig. This is the base of my side marker routing jig. The small router mounts to the back here and the bit comes through this hole. This pin serves a purpose I'll explain later. A very important purpose. That's basically a, a drill bit. This is the carrier part of the jig that holds the neck. The fretboard presses up against these, against these maple pins and gets clamped into place and held down by these. Here's the neck. This is how it's held in place. The side of the neck butts up to these. A small router bit, the same size as the, the binding, is placed in the router. This jig has several indexing cavities that run along this pin. This pin and this bit are the same size and the bit is straight above the, the bottom pin. These ride With the neck mounted in the jig, you can see where it's made its cut. This is clamped into a vise here on top of the workbench. This whole plastic piece can move up and down in these slots. There you go. I ended up shaping the neck into the body so that there was a smooth transition from the neck to the body. Not There really is no right angle from the neck to the body. Just a, a smooth transition there. And that, my friends, is the story of this neck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.